What's going on internet? IG here again today with another Linux distro review and today I'm having a look at Magia 3. So Magia 3 is the second most popular distro according to DistroWatch's hits per page type deal. So this actually isn't a very good representation of market share but having said that it has gone from a distribution developed forked off Mandriver quite a number of years ago to a very popular and viable desktop operating system. Now in my experience it's been very very stable and it provides a large range of software and desktop environments to boot. So today I'm going to be having a look at the KDE Plasma desktop version. So here we are with Magia 3, the KDE Plasma desktop. It comes with the latest stable software, so it's not going to be bleeding edge by any stretch of the imagination, but it's going to be stable enough that you can use it on an everyday basis without any crashes. And actually, I have to say, very proud to report that this is the first KDE Plasma desktop that I've ever been able to use without a single Plasma crash. So it's been very stable. I've been using it on and off now for about three weeks and uh, it's given me no trouble at all. And also the speed and responsiveness of KDE has come along in leaps and bounds with the release of the Plasma Desktop 4.10 and, uh, and obviously Magia 3 benefits from this a lot. We're sitting at KDE 4.10.2, but as updates become available, it will roll out with it as well. Now, when it comes to updating your packages and software, it actually is very efficient. It has a very vast repository that covers a lot of great software for nearly all the desktop environments out there. And for the first, and for my first impressions of Magia 3, it really came across as the ideal desktop operating system. It's not trying to be fancy. It's not trying to shove any new user paradigm down the user's throat. Wrote. It's just bringing the best and most stable open source software to the user's computer with minimal fuss, but at the same time it's, it remains easy to use with excellent hardware controls to boot. So of course we have the Magia Control Center which is really the Mandriva Control Center which was developed a long time ago, but they continue to maintain it and keep it working, which uh, it's still one of the best ways to manage all of the hardware and settings on your system from a system level, a simple root password and you've got access to nearly everything about your system with a graphical interface. So it makes it very easy for new users that are used to the control panel way of doing things. As you can set up nearly anything about your system here in these settings, which is fantastic. We've seen it for a long time and it's good that it still works and, and it doesn't really overlap with too many other of the functionality set into the KDE desktop environment, such as the system settings. Now, when it does come to software management, you've got a few different, you've got two different options. You've got the RPM Drake or the standard Magia software management console. Simply searching for packages brings up results and allows you to install them and gives you some fundamental information about the program that you want to install. So it's functional, it's not the flashiest thing in the world, but it gets the job done. And then also you have APA, which is the KDE Plasma Desktop in Software Management Program, which categorizes everything into a bit more of like an Ubuntu software center from around the 10.04 time period. But as you can see here, I've noticed it to be quite a bit slower than the Magia uh, uh, Software Management or RPM Drake. Moving on from there, just the overall performance of this desktop is very, very, very impressive. When it comes to launching applications, you're not sitting around waiting at all. There's a vast software catalog out there, like I mentioned, so installing software is a breeze, and also even selecting mirrors for the software to install from is actually very easy as well. Again, a simple trip to the Magia Control Center and you've got options heaven but it's not too cluttered in the way that it's presented, so it's not too hard for the new user to figure out. There's really not a whole lot to say about customizations that Magia makes itself, apart from the fact that it's got some excellent and very consistent branding and artwork, all the way from the boot screen, the grub screen, the login screen, and then obviously the desktop as well. And the artwork works very nicely, and everything else about the system is really going to depend on which desktop environment. And also it interacts very well with other systems as far as a dual booting scenario. Boot up and shutdown speed is also very impressive, as, as is the login time, especially on the KDE Plasma desktop side of things. And the standard set of applications that you get is fairly bare bones, but it covers the basis of what you want to get done. Because I've been using this for almost a month now, I do have quite a, my, quite a few of my own applications installed here, but I really wasn't found lacking any software from the default repositories, and that's the great thing. You don't have to enable any other default repositories when you install Magia. As far as system resources goes, it actually is not too bad at all. 
Obviously I'm running screencasting as well, so it is gonna be chewing through a little bit of the resources, but without anything running, I've noticed that it usually hovers around 400 to 500 megs, which isn't too bad for a modern desktop environment. Overall, I'm really impressed. I feel like this is what a Linux, a Linux desktop operating system should be. It's stable, it's fast, it has a great array of software that's available to install, and it's got a good assortment out of the box as well. It has a strong focus on what the community wants, not on what any particular corporate agenda wants. And so in that regard, I think they're doing a fantastic job in presenting just a simple Linux desktop that is accessible for the new user, but it also has a few features and enough customization for the advanced user to play around with as well. I think it definitely deserves its number two spot on the DistroWatch popularity hits page. And while it might not have as huge a market share as distributions like Linux Mint or Ubuntu, I definitely feel like it has the potential to be the most popular Linux desktop, especially considering that Ubuntu uh, is kind of forging its own direction as far as a as far as a corporate entity is concerned. But I've been very impressed. This is definitely one of my favorite KDE desk, Plasma desktop distributions, simply because of that stability and the speed is unparalleled. And just having a system that gets out of your way so you can work is a fantastic thing in its own right. And it's ultimately what you want in a Linux desktop operating system. So overall, I am very impressed with Magia 3. It's a great release, very solid. It brings some up-to-date software to the table, but it's very stable. And at the same time, you get some great configuration tools there with the Magia Control Center. And overall, just a very solid desktop offering. Not in your face, not pushing a corporate agenda, just a great op open source project bringing some great open source development to the community. Let me know what your thoughts are about Magia 3 in the comment section below. And if you like this video, then definitely give it a thumbs up. It helps out the channel. And if you really like these videos on a regular basis, you can subscribe and get this stuff on a regular basis. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be back in the very near future with, an, with more Linux distro reviews, Debian 7, Zorin OS 7, and maybe a few others in there as well. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.